So if they opened the barn doors and said, Bessie, go free, Bessie is going to wander out into the snow, scratch a bit, and then die. Yeah, and you know, you saw that little clip of the, the guy in the cow suit ringing the cowbell. That may as well be the dinner bell for Wile E. Coyote, man. Because, oh. you know, that. The coyotes in Ottawa would have a field day. Oh, man, this is like going to the Mandarin for the carnivores out there. That clip, that segment with David Menzies last week on the PETA protest in Toronto, well, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's caused controversy uh, among PETA supporters. It's had it's received praise from people in the dairy industry on both sides of the border. In fact, this, this story's been spread around North American wide, and we've been receiving emails and comments from people on both sides of the issue. Lots of them saying, we didn't give PETA its due. So now, Emily Lavender joins us now. She is a campaigner with PETA and was part of that protest there. Uh, Emily, you watched, uh, you watched the segment last week. You've seen what we had to say. What's your criticism? Um, I always enjoy Sun TV's coverage. It was, it was funny. Um, but uh, if you want PETA's side of it, um, you know, cows are already destined to the slaughterhouse that are used for the dairy industry. So as much as it would be wonderful that they would go to sanctuaries, they're already going to a slaughterhouse. So... Uh, what would happen but basically... But if they go to the slaughterhouse, then at least the animal's being used. You may disagree with how it's being used because you, uh, I'm assuming that you're a vegan, but at least the animal's being used there. Yeah, well, we want people to basically dump dairy. And as the dairy uh, industry, you know, wanes a bit, they're going to breed fewer and fewer cows. So that's what we want to see. We want to we wanna see an end to cows having their babies ripped away from them within 24 hours. Uh, many cows go lame from the filth, the constant strain of being uh, kept pregnant. Uh, and after four or five years of being milk machines, their spent bodies are sent to the slaughterhouse. Uh, and we've seen uh, in slaughterhouses cows having their throats slit while they're still conscious, having their skin peeled off. Have you witnessed this yourself or is this, um, you know, so I looked through a lot of the material that people sent me. Uh, people on your side of the argument who were saying, Lily, you don't get it. Uh, why don't you educate yourself? And some of it's the same material that's been going around for years. I had one gentleman say, well, the cow uh, ruminant gets mixed in with dog and chickens and it's fed back to the cows. That has not happened in years and years. It happened for a very short window. It did lead to mad cow. We know it's a bad thing, but it doesn't happen now. But that's still the argument being put forward. Are you seeing these things with your own eyes? Because I've been to dairy farms, and, well, they're farms, so they're not, um, I wouldn't eat off the floor, but they're still clean operations. Well, the cows do go lame from the constant intensive confinement, and it is a, a horrific experience for any mother to have their baby taken from them. Cows have been seen crying out for days after their calves have been taken from them. They've jumped fences. Uh, and walked for miles after they've been sold at auction. Uh, well, I, I would argue that those are the rare cases. One of the um, criticisms that we had was that we didn't talk to people like you. We asked people that were part of the protest what they thought. I want to play a clip and get your reaction because they said, well, you shouldn't talk to those people. They don't know what they're talking about. You should talk to the leaders. But we did ask someone, what would happen if we let the cows go free? Here it is. Are there cows and chickens in the wild today? Uh, I'm not sure. If we let them go free, I'm sure they can survive in the wild, giving them enough time and opportunity to do so. Oh, really? Who would feed these animals? Uh, that's, the, that's nature's work. That's nature's work. I don't find her, her argument plausible, but should, should we not talk to your members and your supporters at protesters? Should we only speak to officials? Um, speak to whoever you like. Um, but uh, I'm sure that the, the woman speaking, um, you know, they often go out uh, with Toronto, Pig Save, Toronto Cow Save, and they witness these animals um, on the way to the slaughterhouse while they're in transport trucks. Um, they did it recently when it was like minus 30, minus 40. Um, some animals freeze to the side of the transport trucks uh, because they're transported in, in all weather extremes, including when it's uh, 30 degrees or 40 degrees in the summer um, and I mean
people see these animals as individuals. They have personalities. They form friendships and families when given the chance. Um, and so I think that a lot of people would love to see these animals go to sanctuaries or be um, you know, but, let out into the wild, but the reality is that they are destined us, to the slaughterhouse. Most of us do like to eat meat. That's why the slaughterhouses exist. I want to ask mm. you about PETA's slaughterhouses, though. And the, the, I don't believe that PETA runs um, uh, pounds for dogs in, or cats in Canada, but in the U.S. they do. And your organization kills a lot of animals. In 2012, it was 1,600. Uh, pets killed by PETA, 2,300 in 2009, 2,200 in 2010. It, this seems like a big disconnect here. You're advocating that all these animals have to live, so we should stop eating meat, we should give up dairy. You're euthanizing pets. Well, the thing is, for every kitten or puppy born, uh, it's a virtual death sentence for another unfortunate animal waiting in a shelter. Every last one of the thousands, tens of thousands of animals dying in the streets or in shelters could have been prevented by spaying and neutering. And we really encourage people to spay and neuter, but also adopt, not buy from breeders. Uh, let me ask you, you this. When I've spoken with, uh, with PETA supporters, they tend to be very concerned about the welfare of animals. They don't want animals to die. And then I ask them a basic question. Are you against abortion? Are you pro-life? Because you look at pictures of babies in utero, and they are quite cute. They are fully developed humans, and I normally find that PETA members are very pro-abortion. They'll say pro-choice. They won't defend this, but they will defend a cow. Where do you stand? Well, PETA's stance is that if you're pro-choice, choose to go vegan, and if you're pro-life, choose to let animals live and go vegan. So either way, we encourage people to go vegan, whatever side of the fence they're on. So basically, it's uh, defend animals, but not humans. Uh, we can help animals and humans. Uh, there doesn't have to be a choice there. But, but you just said, you know, be pro-choice and go vegan. It's, it, again, it, it's a, in a, an intellectual inconsistency. Well, PETA's mission is about animals, and that's what we're focusing on. Um, if people want to go to our website, PETA.org, they can watch the video footage for themselves, see how animals suffer in factory farms. Uh, chickens and turkeys have their throats slit while they're still fully conscious. Pigs have their teeth, tails, and testicles and, cut off without any painkillers. And, and again, you guys do go to the extreme. We'll let the, the viewers decide. We'll send them to Facebook. Facebook.com, punch in my name, Brian Lilly. You'll find us. Thanks, Emily, for dropping by. Thank we'll you. We'll chat again. Thank you.